Hello, and welcome to the second game between Mr. James and Creamy Biggums here on the Steel Division uh, Season 8, Division 5 League. So, second infantry head, or second Indian head here, I uh, said, versus second New Zealand. Uh, it is Maverick versus Maverick today. So, second New Zealand, uh, second infantry head, <laughs> I'm gonna get these mixed up a lot, I swear to God. Let's just call him Indian head here. Indian Head being one of the strongest uh, divisions in the game right now. Uh, a lot of people say that just because of its rushing power and its CQC, but it doesn't look like we're seeing a lot of that for now. So Engineers, two basics, Rangers Marauders, uh, Rifles Early, Rifles Leader. In the middle here, M1919, three Engineers, two Rifles Early, three basics. Basics had loaded already, a Rifles Leader and M1 gun. Now the Rangers Marauders, M1919, two basics, and a Rifles Early for... James here, we've got two Calidromics, two Murderers Rifles, two Jaegers, two um, Amari, and a six pounder. And then Recon, two Spandaus. I believe these are snipers, actually. Calidromics, two, two more Diggers, Murderers Rifles, six pounder. Spandau, Diggers, Murderers Rifles again, two of them. Maori, Calidromics. And then up here, another six pounder, another sniper, Diggers, and Murderers Rifles. Actually, it looks like. Um, Mr. James is going to get into position here first, uh, but with just the machine guns, so neither side really rushing. I would have expected almost, um, ooh, what are they called? Rangers, right? Rangers with just the flamers to come up here and uh, deploy very aggressively. It looks like he is already deploying very aggressively, which is not really the play to make as these dual spandos and the sniper tear apart this M1919. M1 gun doesn't, doesn't load, but uh, the Caledromics here is gonna force these units to unload here and wow just the absolute fire there of the uh oh what's it called the <laughs> the semi-automatic rifles for the time being a lot of rifles here these uh rifles early they do have one bar basics of course having the <laughs> m1 carbines and more m1 grands these units just melted. One digger's getting out of there alive, but that engagement goes very well. Down here, though, M8. There's a six-pounder. Ooh, just barely not on the road, so can't quite see it just yet. And these semi-automatic rifles catch the Caledromics out in the open where they're just using their rifles. Not what you want to see. Maori a bit better in that regard with the two MG34s, as the Rangers Marauders are going to go down there. Oop, M8. Did move up a little bit, but six-pounder going to go down there. Semi-rifles. Do get the better of the Maori here. The diggers also getting pinned down quite a bit there. As uh, in the center, not much of an engagement, just uh, rifles or motorized rifles shooting off the basics here. Spitfire trying to deal with these rifles leaders. As uh, wow, these semi auto rifles are loud. Never quite noticed that. Gabby out though. Uh, Spitfire is on the tail of Gabby here, so. Or, well, not quite on the tail just yet, but it does have to be somewhat careful. You wouldn't want uh, the aces to, to die right away, right? As rifles early and engineers do clean out the bottom here with just one motorized rifles there uh, being left. Oop, Gabby's coming back around. Oop, that's not good. Gabby goes down. Looks like Mr. James with the Spitfire survives that engagement. The sniper also put on return fire as more infantry comes in here to try and stabilize this, but... Uh, Mm, gonna be a hard task. Looks like all these uh, infantry are splitting off though. Rifles really do uh, get on top of the sniper and the sniper starts firing at the M1 gun. Typical. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, even a single squad of basics really will be able to clean all this up as long as it uh, gets in the CQC there. Boston coming down. Mm, doesn't look like we're gonna see a rush and a surrender. Uh, but certainly quite a bit of damage there. As one unit does end up going down. And one gun still be fired at by the sniper. As uh, these motors, or the, I guess they're firing at the six pounder right now with their single bar. Yeah, really need to. All these infantry, you do need to get them within the 500 meter range to really be effective. Um, just because of those semi automatic rifles. Motorized rifles gonna take a TNT to the face though and go down. Yeah. One of the MGs did go down. Interesting to see these didn't keep pushing. The six pounder went down before it died. To the sniper. One more Spandau over here. Infantry is moving forward. Bofors coming up. 
Three more basics. I would uh, shore up this position before trying to set up for another push. Just an M1. Ooh, M4 goes down to the six pounder. Definitely not a trade you want to see. Uh, as these basics and rifles early are now out of green cover, fighting with the motorized rifles. Almost 20 semi automatic rifles versus uh, just a single brand gun, though. And a couple of Lee Enfields, not gonna end that well. Rifles leader here. Uh, is he getting its Springfield on target? It does have to <laughs> reload for a million years, though, as these now are gonna clean up the slash bundle. It's gonna be a 15, that uh, was 16 8 now, as Mr. Or as Creamy Bigums takes a commanding lead in the beginning of this game. Engineers coming in. Mm, do have to be kind of careful. The Maoris do have two Thompsons, and uh, if they can't get their TNT off in time. Yeah, it looks like the Maoris are actually going to rush them down and force them to surrender there. Definitely need more infantry there. We do have more basics coming in. We'll be uh, interested to see if they are going to be dropped up here in the end, as we see another Sherman 3 up north and uh, Spando. To deal with this flag that's also gone down. Six pounder goes down though. Rangers, Marauders, and the M8 here. With the diggers and the motorized rifles. Not too much of a threat right there, but the M8 does have to be a little bit careful. Basis going down quite quickly. The Maori definitely having the advantage in this. You can see there with their four SMGs, two of them being Thompsons, which are the best uh, rifles in the game. Spitfire coming down to shoot the engineers. As you see that, but I guess the six pounder is going to deal with the M8 as soon as it gets a uh, line of sight there. And Spitfire does do good damage on the engineers. Kitty Hawk coming in. There's a Bofors in the middle here, but um, yeah, these Bofors do not have great sight lines. And uh, these Maori, like an 80 type of AT, this M4A1 is free to just come up and bully it. Not that I think we will see that, as the Kitty Hawk does go for, for the M8. Doesn't quite kill it, though. The basics here also being dropped down. Some automatic rifles being very powerful. Still 15 to 9, though. 13 minutes left on the clock for now. And a heated start in these quarterfinals for Division 5. Two more rifles coming out, and we see here that the Bofors is firing quite late at things. Uh, and... Because, just because of this hill, right? If the plane's over here, normally a Bofors would be able to shoot it, right? If it was up in the sky above this position or so. But because of this hill, you actually gotta not only calculate with the hill, but also the green cover. So if you do have this hill, I would recommend bringing up your AA. You do have to be careful, though, not to bring it too far forward, as a uh, kid gets shot at from something like this position, which is very easy to retake from the second New Zealand side, or the other side of the map here, is a bit dangerous. Staggering coming in. Uh, diggers firing at these basics as they push forward. Mm, bit of a waste there. Rifles early. Okay, we moving in here. Something went down. I heard a plane die. Died to what? <laughs> or maybe I'm just going crazy. This flag is going to be retaken though. It is an 18.6 right now. Wow. Six minutes left on the clock. Something's really got to be done about this uh, just massive flood of infantry here. M1919 is going to get the better of the diggers there. Mm, Rangers Marauders coming in too. They get the Willapete down. And there are Thompsons on target. Unless they do move to intercept finally. Do get their flames down. The fallback point is just being disgusted on the diggers there. Boss coming in for the M1919 though. Sherman moving in. Uh, Sherman in a stag down here. Mm, you really, you wanna, you wanna really uh, cover these flags off and get this one back just to put it at least to <laughs> not the triple tick, right? Because, because wow, at, at at this kind of a level of tick, um, it is just very, very hard to come back. Division five, right? <laughs> Diggers once again not having any AA. Uh, and a flood of infantry being moved up to clear off this as well. Just a couple of basics and two Shermans being left over here to deal with that. Finally, the triple tick is removed. But only, uh... <laughs> from six minutes to nine minutes on the game. But this flag does go into the hands of, um... Creamy Bigums for the time being. Caldromix uh, does have a flamethrower. Flamethrower is somewhat dangerous. Versus the Sherman, and actually the Sherman gets surrounded. <laughs> But it's rare that we see that. Boston hitting the rifles early. Lots of investment in air for 
Oh, someone who doesn't seem to have any infantry left in this deck at the time being. M1 once again not uh, having any AT. Sherman 3 kills the M8, no problem there. M1919 coming in, trying to secure this flag again. Yeah, this flag's gonna go down though. And uh, this flag still is in control of Creamy Williams for the time being. The M4A1 without the basics not being able to uh, effectively spot the units. Sherman coming up here. Does have to be careful of the other two Shermans. Yeah, 16 8 for now. Kitty Hawk coming on. Bovers once again. Can't quite see anything. So, rifles really does go down. This Bofors does get on target. This Kitty Hawk not falling back quick enough. Mm, might actually go down here. As uh, the second we hit phase B, we see another flood of infantry. I would wonder why in Division 5. They don't take more infantry in A. They know they're going to lose a lot. So wouldn't it be just logical to take a lot? Because <laughs> at that rate uh, that you're losing infantry, you really can't afford not to take three, four cards, especially with an infantry-focused division like um, Second Infantry Head or Second New Zealand here. Infantry Head. <laughs> Second Infantry Indian Head. Oh, man. Whew, Diggers and the Six-Pound are being surrounded here. Stighound is moving up. Lots more diggers here. Uh, I wonder what happened to the Sherman. Must have moved up and then died on the sill to this Sherman. Interesting, interesting. Ma Rangers Marauders are fairly deadly. Uh, they just have to move up to get that Sherman. And <laughs> bloody hell, are these seven automatic slow? A lot of that MGs. Uh, I have turned it on on my recording studio, so hopefully they're not too bad. Uh, but I am having <laughs> a lot of noise. Stagon versus uh, M4A1. Just gotta be forced to fall back there. Has lots of diggers coming. Hoping to secure multiple flags here. Unvetted though, lots of Maori coming in, two more diggers as well. B47 coming in as a strafe. Uh, no AT gun down here yet, but two Shermans being called in. Okay, okay. There's no AT down here, uh, or in the center here, besides these M4A ones either, but this position has been cleared out. It's still on the triple tick, six minutes left to go. These Shermans are converging as the diggers do move in. These are just their, like the regular rifles, but they do have Thompsons, which does make them a little bit better. Ooh. The Sherman took one penetration. Ooh, he's got to get the kill on one of them, but the other Sherman is still there. Kitty are going to go try and for the second one. Those bofers, once again, not going to be able to fire at it until it's too late. So it does get the hit on it, but um, not quite getting the kill. And the Kitty Hawk is going to fall back. Maori, multiple diggers as well. Spitfire, uh, the Metralix is here. Does get the engine damage on the P47, but no AA out to finish the job, really. Wow, the turning circle on that Spitfire, though. The thing of legends, and this infantry is very weak down here. This might actually be the 12-12 right here, these two flags. is fresh diggers, fresh Maori. These tanks are not in position yet. Uh, there's no AT from the looks of it right now as Mixatus claims another P-47. Diggers do also manage to force the M4 off of this flag. The M4 really doesn't have anything to worry about, but uh, without infantry to screen for it, you're in the same problem as the M4 over here, where it's just waiting to get shot at, basically. The base is getting the better of these diggers from the looks of things. Rifles like coming in. Two more M4s. A lot of M4s here. Basics being lost. Uh, the Rangers Marauders did get the kill on the M4 there. And there's another M4 here, but actually the six pounder, I believe, takes a shot and kills that. So we're moving some crucial support there. And there's nothing to kill this Sherman right now either. Yeah, really, overlying on tanks is never really a good thing. Oop, another 50 kills here on, <laughs> on target on these engineers and the basics. They should have definitely stayed in the forest. Caldromix and really not being a threat there. Oop, and these Shermans are quick moving? Why do they keep moving? They should stop. Huh, Sherman does go down though. Not too much of a di big difference there. And they take out the Stagon. Uh, Dickers Piet coming in now, so Shermans do have to be careful unless they do manage to stop this push right away. That would require Air Recon to know what these units are though. Boston coming in. 
the bomb to Sherman once more. 13 to 11. 10 minutes left on the clock for Mr. James to turn this around. And then begins the long struggle. And face C, I would wager. <laughs> As we do hit the 12 12. Diggers here versus the basics. It is, uh, once again, Bran and Lee Enfields versus semi automatics, but. And these uh, carbines are actually really good. Uh, acting almost as mini STGs there. Okay, yeah. Gotta take out that basic, so. Both are still not firing. And now the Diggers secures this fight. It is 13 to 11. The M4s did get a uh, view with these engineers to shut down the Digger Piet before they can get it and be a threat, so. Nothing to worry about there. This flag temporarily in the hands of the Kirby Biggins. There is a considerable amount of infantry now that uh, the infantry here has been unblobbed and lots of infantry, multiple Maoris here. It's hard to see. I wonder why they're not aggregating properly. Multiple Maoris, multiple diggers. Maori coming up north too. This flag's close to going down. Although the tanks did go down. Looks like the Rangers and Marauders with their excellent stealth did manage to sneak up on the M4 and get the bazooka on there. No Sherman coming in there. Two more Maori though. Yeah, two more Maori moving on. Take this one on this rifle sight as the Spandau opens up. Yeah, and uh, that MG42 is gonna tear that rifle sight to pieces. Basically being forced to fall back again. And four doing their best to provide good cover support. But three Shermans in now. Four sick New Zealand. Lots of rifles light. Diggers uh, do get the kill on the engineers. But four rifles like it should be able to clean this up, no problem. Especially with uh, multiple M4s and these close range MG. Should be able to deal with it just fine. <laughs> Gonna pin down these again. Baltimore coming in. AA really not being too effective here. Second Sherman comes in though. There's another rifles light. Is gonna unload here. This flag temporarily going back to Cream Biggums. I'm still an overwhelming force of infantry though for this. As uh, these, oh, I really hope these unload early. Those Maoris will just tear them to shreds if they do get within the 100 meter range. Whew. 48 units of rifles late. Baltimore doing good damage on the M4s, but having not gone down. Uh, the Sherman might get lucky. If it gauges one by one, it might be able to kill one and then the other. There are three Shermans now versus two, so superiority once again. <laughs> well, in Mr. James's hands, but one Sherman already having gone down there. And uh, the Shermans are not really masked up like the other ones are, right? These are firing almost two for one. Ooh, that Sherman goes down and that bounces, giving this Sherman a much harder time to take on these units. Another pounds. Ooh, this is the 90 armor versus the 100 armor Sherman. We do get a penetration there. And another penetration. And a bounce, yeah. Wow, the 10 millimeters of armor actually coming in use there quite well. It's gonna get one more shot off. The Lone Moon crit really not helping that Sherman 3. <laughs> wow, they're just dueling. Another M1's gotta come up as well. Who's gotta get lucky first? I'd give the edge to the Sherman 3 here, but. Yeah. Ooh, that, that armor coming in clutch there. Unfortunate loader wounded though. Unless we see the first off map coming in the Willie's off map here. Very, very good tool there. Uh, these rifles like walked right past the diggers here. Going instead up in for the Maori, which have a lot more close range firepower, but versus 48 units. Bit hard to say. I'm sure I'm coming in here. As this one sneaks up the side here, just off the road. Yeah. Now we are going to eventually go down, but not without taking some troops of their own. One Sherman did eventually go down, from the looks of it. <laughs> An immediate penetration from the Sherman 3 here. This is the M4A1. <laughs> wow. Getting a bit lucky there. That 10 armor, really saving him. Really paying off here. Obviously the first M10 coming in. Yeah, an M10 backed up by a Sherman would have been much more effective, right? Because all the Sherman needs to do is um, tank. <laughs> Funny, because it is a tank. All the Sherman needs to do is a screen for it. And the P47 doesn't see the Hurricane 3. No recon in the church here. 
Ooh, off map coming down right on top of that. The, actually, the multiple rifles like being forced back here. As the Spitfire comes in for the P-47. P-47 does force one of Sherman to fall back as another M-10 comes in here. Uh, the Spitfire almost on the tail of that, but is going to get forced back by the Bovers. Multiple rifles late coming in to clear out these Maori again. But actually going to be caught in the open here. Yeah. Not what you like to see. More Maori coming in. These rifles late are going to be forced back. Mm, this flag, with these flags going down, it's quite dangerous. Ooh, M1 gun's going to unload right into that off map. Yeah, well, is it going to go down? Mm. Not within the transport from the looks of it, but uh, it's got to be pinned down, and that would provide the perfect opportunity here for all this infantry to start pushing. Yeah. Baltimore coming in. Kidiok again. I think Spofer's still not quite in position. Even this green cover would be better, right? All these infantry units forced to fall back. What are you shooting at? Looks like just 50 gal shooting. Diggers versus rifle sight. Again, Sherman's advancing in now. And uh, close range, this M10 does not have the armor to deal with the Sherman. Sure, it'll pen every time. Um, especially if he doesn't turn the APCR off, which really should be done. Having more than enough penetration at 135, I believe, to kill an M4. But... Oop, it's got a it's got a line. And then it's APCR, driver kill, but that's gonna pen as well. And the Sherman 3 is going to have the rate of fire on it there. Hellcat coming in though. Mm. These do have to be sort of careful. You almost need to move them in packs. APCR does get the kill there. Diggers in the Maori are gonna clean up these rifles. Boston's coming in though. If they do get a hit on that Hellcat, but this Bover is actually doing its job. <laughs> this fight goes down though. 15-9. 14 minutes left on the clock. Here. For Creamy Biggums, as he does start getting ticked down. All Creamy Biggums really needs to do is hold on to the 50 minute mark now, which is easier said than done against Maverick when you have traded uh, this badly. Multiple Hellcats coming in. Do they not see it? Yeah, and when Hellcats, if they don't shoot first, they just go down. Uh, they only have eight health or something like that, which is more than enough for Sherman to one shot them, which is really the problem with the Hellcat. Facey Hellcat card, though, potentially. They are cheap, and they are abundant, so excellent support if you got to deal with Shermans. Not so much against a bunch of infantry, though, and there are Piats here. Well, one Piat. <laughs> Rifle Slate moving in again. Off map going to come in again and stop any reinforcements that are going in the center there. Yeah. Maori getting good shots here. Because it is Maverick versus Maverick, I will uh, go to a two times speed here. Just in the interest of saving time, the income is not enough to really make up for that. Not a little infantry here, for, even for this off map to hit, but if Creamy Vigams isn't careful, he's going to run all this infantry and these Hellcats into the off map. This one definitely having gone into the off map. Does look like it stops just in time here. Talcat goes down to the Staghound or the Piet. Uh, yeah, the Staghound is really going to be the perfect counter here versus Hellcats. Having both the rate of fire and the penetration or the, the damage to kill him in two shots there. Multiple Kitty Hawks coming in for the infantry as well. Bofors finally doing its job. The other one gets his bombs off them. B47 going for something that it can't see. Kidiak forced to fall back there. These flags and a firm control of Mr. James. A nice comeback here. Rifles late. Kind of get cleaned up as well. Multiple Opalites coming in. I was wondering where these were. Wow. Rhino coming in. This one definitely would have had the advantage against the uh, Shermans that we saw in B. But, I guess not coming out. This guy's just sitting here. <laughs> Interesting. To say the least. Alright, I'm gonna be able to clean up that stack out, no problem. Does only have to be careful of the PF, but lots of engineers coming in. Potentially can stabilize again. 
which would be all that's needed uh, in the 22 minutes remaining, he would lose. So he does need to get, for, at least for a little while, back onto that 12-12. Another off map coming down. These got three charges? That'd be pretty nasty. A lot of these troops being somewhat weakened. And to have their rhino actually being forced to fall back. Multiple engineers coming in though. Uh, Sherman 3 gets the kill on one. The second one does manage to unload, so there's the third. Uh, and they do stand a fine chance against these opalites. Off, I'm coming down again, forcing all these units to fall back. Good to see the immediate retreat there. As more semi-auto rifles tear into the Opalites, you can always hear them. They're like 30% louder than every other gun in the game. Like, tanks don't even sound as loud as them. Uh, but the first engineer is definitely uh, getting hit by that Sherman. Do manage a little bit of hold on here with the engineers now. Is going to bring in 10 militia groups. Oh man, demolition groups being very powerful, having a bazooka and a flamethrower, but only coming in a C phase into the second infantry. Definitely worth taking in the most points though, as this Bofors is again on the bottom of the hill, right? Can't see anything, and it's behind a building. Like it only started firing when the when the Baltimore was like, very short above it. Yeah, finally we see the move onto the hill here. Potentially, I realize that it's not going to cut it. Thirteen to eleven though. These units are in a precarious position here. Uh, Carrier 30 Cal is going to do some good damage, and because it is armored, that's all it really needs to be here to <laughs> clean up this infantry, right? It's going to necessitate a tank or an M8 or something, which I believe creeping would be out by now. Uh, as we see another Rhino coming in. This is all this infantry here being forced back by the soft net, though. Uh, it's going to be a while till that push can materialize, and even then, into the relatively decent CUC firepower of the. Maori and the diggers be at in here. It's not going to be the best. Oblites, snipers as well. Diggers carry 30 cal moving up forward. Here is the two. The 50 cal going to be doing good damage. The 50 cal really just needs to get to the edge of this hill, and it is uh, very, very dangerous. Of course, still no AA. Finally, a Bovers. As the Bedford Supply came in here to try and repair the broken tank before it went down to the Hellcat from the looks of things. Rhino still providing good cover support. Saved up for a Sherman 3 on this side. Another Rhino coming in there. And now we see the off map for uh, Creamy Biggums. But with this flag going down here and this one as well, it's back to a 59. And this M1 still just sitting here. So, 7 minutes remaining. 16 8 now. Telcat being the last remaining vestige here. The overwhelming infantry down south just uh, really proving a thorn in the side of Creamy Biggums here. And I'm not sure this off-map is really what's needed right now. All this infantry is basically already pinned down. Uh, you're going to bring it in, and you're going to kill a Willies, right? And now the Rhino should be able to deal with the Sherman 3. But multiple bombers coming in. At least this time, the AA was a slightly more effective. Still going down, though. Killing the boss for it, though. Hellcat, this 50 cal is also advancing in this flag. This fight goes back into the side of Creamy Vegas for now, but these rifles like just uh, unloaded straight into the 50 cal or the 30 cal carrier, and the Maoris with diggers, multiple units shooting at them. Uh, no real chance there. Rhino gets killed on the 30 cal on the move here. Might just be a gratuitous use of fast move. It looks like like fast attack, but um, these units aren't like slowing down to stop. Rhino. Uh, they get one shot on the Sherman 3 from the looks of it, Big 47. I gotta be trying to go for the 50 cal now. 15 to 7 again. Multiple demolition groups coming in. Rifles early. Maori still controlling this flag. Do manage to hit it, but just pins it down, being rocket planes. Wolverine coming in now. Sherman needs to engage first on the Wolverine, and this is one dead rhino. Lots of Opalites coming in as well. Demolition groups gonna unload straight into the uh, machine gun fire here from the looks of things. But actually, I'm actually gonna wait for, from it for now. And if they get into this uh, green cover here without being spotted, they can run amok. 
the tanks aren't really going to stop anything from there. Oop. Rhino versus Wolverine. Wolverine, uh, Rhino actually bounces against the Wolverine and it does go down there. Artillery, though, is firing, but there's no more tanks up here. And it's slowly looking like this is the end for our Vrid Vegans as the 9M1 Garands, while they do do okay in the CQC range. Uh, yeah, if they're not in the forest, kind of hard to do anything about that. Creamy Bingham's front just absolutely collapsing here. So, very good comeback from Mr. James as Creamy Bingham's surrenders. 3,365 kills to 3,760. Lots of kills there for Mr. James. Yeah. Nothing quite standing out. Uh, except for those Bofors here. I guess I did eventually <laughs> get a couple of kills. And ooh, the Toxus went down. Yeah, lots of planes went down that I didn't see. Hard to catch everything. But, hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time. Yeah. Well done to all these Shermans. <laughs> they did get their values worth. For the most part. So, goodbye.